John 10, verse number 10. And the word of the Lord declares, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. We've been sharing with you and we're going to share um, more today about this confidence. But we began it and bottom line up front that we receive life by accepting Jesus Christ by faith. Life more abundantly is living life in the confident zone. It's next level living. Next level living is to crown him as Lord, not for him to just be savior of your life, but he wants to be Lord. And to trust him as Lord is to trust him for our deliverance, our development, and our direction. God wants to save us, but he also wants to sanctify us, and he wants to be sovereign over our life. John 10, verse number 10 in the um, uh, New Living Translation, I believe, or the CEV version, one of those versions, I didn't write it down here, but it says, the thief enters only to steal, to kill, and to destroy, I came so that they could have life, indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. God wants us to live life to the fullest. He don't want us to just be surviving. He wants us to thrive. We ought to thrive living the abundant life. And really, living life to the fullest right now is really just staying healthy and staying safe and enjoying time with our family and trusting the Lord in the midst of this crisis. That's the most we can do right now. We got to do it to the fullest. And so we're going to trust the Lord. It is Christ over crisis, is peace in the pandemic, is winning over worry, is refocusing so that we will not be consumed with this thing because we ought not be consumed with anything other than God. We ought to be consumed with God and his presence and his will and all of the things that he has called us to do, commissioned us to do, appointed us to do, um, gave us the ability to do, we ought to be doing those things. It's important that we stay in the right frame of mind, living in the confident zone, next level living. Now, we have to understand that in this crisis, truly, we need faith and confidence. Tell your neighbor, in this crisis, we truly need faith and confidence. And that's faith and confidence in God, or else we will be consumed with fear, doubt, unbelief, anxiety, and worry. But Jesus, he is the answer to all life ills. And he taught us many things through the scripture. And so I want to walk through the scripture and it's going to help give us some insight that we need in order to be able to deal with life's ills. It comes through the person of Jesus. It's all about him. He is the base and the boundary, the center and the circumference, the sum and the substance of what life is all about. As our bishop used to say, it's all about him. And so it's all about Jesus. And he taught us many, many things, many of which had to deal with faith. And the reason why Jesus spent so much time dealing and teaching on faith because God requires it of us. In fact, we cannot please God without faith. You cannot please God without faith. So faith is required of God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We move from faith to faith. In fact, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Every time we operate in faith, we reveal God's righteousness to somebody. They see God's righteousness through our exercise and our faith. Abraham, he believed God and it was counted as righteousness unto him. And so our faith when it moves when people can see it it reveals God's righteousness it also reveals your righteousness in God praise the name of Jesus and so we thank God that we move from faith to faith into the realm of confidence where we're not just believing where we know where we know and there's some things we ought to get to a place to where we know not that we know all things not that we know everything that's going to happen but we know our God 
and we know that our God is able and we know him in a way that we know that he's going to take care of us. And so it's not just believing that he's going to take care of, but I know he's going to take care of us because he's our loving, caring, sharing heavenly father. And so we live life in the confident zone. Now, the particular lesson that Jesus taught is directly relevant to us, to the times we're facing currently. And there are many nuances in this text to speak to us in our present, our present circumstances. Let's go to Mark, the fourth chapter, and we're going to spend the rest of our time in this pericope. Mark, the fourth chapter, verse number 35. We're going to spend the rest of our time just dealing with these six or so passages of scripture. And the word of the Lord reads, and the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. And so if we had a subtitle, it would be, let us go to the other side of this thing. Let us go to the other side of this thing. Christian confidence, let us go to the other side of this thing. This what? This pandemic. What? This interruption. What? This crisis. What? This challenge that we're facing. Let us go to the other side of this thing. You can just go ahead and put in whatever you want to put in there, the pain, the pressure, the problem. Let us go to the other side of this thing because we got to move. We can't stay stuck. David say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we got to go through to get to the other side. And so the Bible says in verse Number 36, after he said, let us pass over unto the other side, it says, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. Now, if you read in verse number one, it says that the people were so crowded around Jesus that Jesus had to hop into the boat at the edge of the shore and teach the people from the boat because they were all around the shore. So he had to get some space between him and the people. So he hopped on the boat and taught all of these parables and all of these things. And after he had finished, he told the disciples, he said, let us go over to the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. And then in verse 36, it says, when they had sent the multitude away, they took him even as he was. I mean, he didn't grab anything. He didn't do anything special to prepare for the trip. They knew him as Jesus, as a teacher, as a rabbi, and they just took him as he was. The Bible said there were also with him other little ships. Verse 37, it says, and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Or in other words, it start taking on water. Now, you got to understand, he just said to them, let's go over or pass over unto the other side. Now, they they he did not promised them that it was going to be a smooth ride. He didn't promise them that everything was going to go perfect. But he just said, let us go over unto the other side. Now, how many have ever started out one way and in the midst of something, it changes up on you? And, and you thought that it was going to be smooth sailing. You got married and you thought it was going to be smooth sailing. You got a new job and you thought everything was going to be perfect. You know, you started out this new journey and then you have some bumps in the road, but you envision it going smooth that you start out and you finish like you started out. But sometimes right in the midst of a thing, things change up on you. 
things begin to get a little murky. Things begin to get a little troubling, a little trial. Trials begin to come up. Trouble begins to come up. Sometimes even tribulation comes up right in the midst of it. But you thought you were just going to go through the thing and it was going to be perfect. You had this vision of how you wanted it. You wanted two children and a white picket fence. And you got two boys, but you wanted two girls. But you wanted a boy and a girl. And things start to change. It changes up right in the middle of it. But can you handle? and remember what God said he said let us pass over unto the other side so point number one today for our teaching lesson I want to encourage you saints of God and those that are watching via Facebook live remember what God has said He said, let us pass over unto the other side, meaning that he's already prepared for everything that's to come. But you got to remember what he said. Tell your neighbor, you got to remember what God has said. You got to remember the logos. The logos is what is written. That's what God has said. That's why Jesus, when Jesus was tempted of the devil, he said, it is written. He, he declared what is written. He declared the logos. Now, the logos is what God has said. And we ought to know the word. And when we know the word, we can find comfort and strength in the word of God because we can look in the Bible and find out what God has already said. What he said about you, what he said about your future. He said, beloved I, be- beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in hell even as your soul prospers. God says, I will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. God says, if you go through the valley of the shadow of death, that I'm going to be with you through the valley. He said, if you make your bed in hell, I'm there. I'm with you always. Lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. I'm going to supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. God's word is filled with promises and we can rest on what God has said. Hallelujah. But we also got to understand there's a thing called a rhema word. And the rhema word is a right now word. Not a right now word, but a right now word for your present circumstances. That's how we say it down south. It's a right now word. It's a word for your present circumstances. It is what God not only has said, but it's what he's saying. And you got to know what God is saying to you because sometimes in the middle of the thing, God will speak to you something and he will tell you to do something different in the midst of it. It's not contradicted to what, to what he said. It is now advancing you in what he's now saying. And you got to know what God has said, but you also got to know what the Lord is saying to you. Somebody say right now. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. You got to listen to what God is saying. God is speaking some things. God said, you're waiting on bread. You're waiting on stimulus to sustain you. But you need to understand that you need to live by the word of God. Not just bread alone. Yeah, you need some bread. He said, but not bread alone. Yeah, you need some money, but not money alone. Yeah, you need some financial security, but not financial security alone. You need the word word of God a rhema word for your present right now circumstances to push you where God wants you to go to use you in the ministry that God has for you to take you to the places that he's seen for your life you need to hear a word from God every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God you know because faith cometh by hearing God talk you got to hear God talk That's how your faith is built. It's through what he said and what he is saying. Now, now we got to understand that that God wants you to live on the word. Tell your neighbor, God wants me to live on the word. Remember what God has said, because if you remember that there was a time where Jesus was walking on the water. And the Bible says he was walking on the water and Peter and the other disciples were in the boat and they saw Jesus coming and they were afraid because they thought he was a ghost. But Jesus told them, don't be afraid. And then Peter, he wanted to dialogue with Jesus. He said, Jesus, is that you? If that's you, Jesus, bid me to come. And Peter stepped out on the word of God. What was that word? That word was come. 
And Jesus said, come to Peter. Peter stepped out not knowing what the water was going to do. All he remembered, all he had in his mind is what God had said. And God said, come. Jesus said, come. And he stepped out and began to walk on water. I'm telling you, when you step out on what God has said, he'll make provision for you that even the elements will have to be sustained up under you. That God will cause there to be things in your life to happen for you that don't even make sense that defies gravity that defies the laws of this world that defy God can do some things in your life that's supernaturally but you got to step out on the word when he says come he told Peter to come because providence is connected to his word providence is connected to his word he makes provision beforehand. See, Jesus, he accounted for the storm. He accounted for the storm. You, you, you got to understand that God makes provision beforehand. That's called providence. And if you are a born again believer and you have a revelation of Jesus Christ, you got to understand, Mike, that you're on the providence plan. So God has made provision for you beforehand. In other words, he's not surprised by the storm. He's not surprised by what's going on. You see, you see, I'm reminded of a story where there was a famine in the land. And, and Elijah, God's man, God took care of Elijah. God told him, he said to him, Elijah, I want you to go down by the brook. He says, I want you to drink from the brook. Because why? I made provision beforehand. Everybody might not know that there's water there, but Elijah, I want you to go there. He says, not only did him, uh, am I going to give you something to drink in the famine while the land is dry because there's no rain. He says, I'm going to provide for you a raven. And the raven is going to feed you. Now, I know he's a dirty bird. And I know that he's probably not the ideal way that you see your blessing coming. But, but, but I want you to know that I will do something and I will do it unconventionally. God can bless you in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a storm. Then when the brook dried up, the Bible says, I commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. A widow woman is a woman who normally broke because they don't have a husband back in that time. They didn't have very much because they didn't have anybody to provide for. So God says, I will use unsuspected means to take care of you. Why? Because I make provision beforehand. And God said, I'll do it in such a way that you will know it's me. God said, I'll do it in that way because if I did it some other way, you might give credit to something else. But God says, when I do it a certain way, you know that couldn't be nobody but God. That couldn't be nobody but God. Couldn't be nobody but God. How do you prosper in the middle of a crisis? You got to listen to the voice of God. Because he's reliable. Somebody say he's reliable. Somebody say he's dependable. Somebody say he makes provision. Provision is connected to it. When you listen to the voice of God, God says, you don't have to worry about what you need when you're praying for what I want, when you're connected to my heart, when you're listening to my word, when you're following my voice, God says, I'll make provision for you. It's important to understand this in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a crisis, because I declare and I prophesy to you and those who are listening who will receive this word by faith that you're coming out of this thing better than how you came into this thing. If you would listen to the voice of our God. I'm already starting to see it in my own life. God is showing me things and doing things that I didn't even expect. I didn't anticipate. I did not plan for it. If I could have planned it, I wouldn't have even planned it this good. But it's right in the midst of the crisis. God is blessing in so many different ways. He's blessing physically. He's blessing emotionally. He's blessing financially. And they said everything is supposed to be down. But God has made it to where things Things are up when things are supposed to be down. How 
is that? That God will make things up on, when things are supposed to be down. Come on, somebody prophesy to yourself. Say, I'm coming out of this thing better than how I went into it. You got to remember what he said. Can the church say amen? amen? The Bible says, as we continue in verse 38, because there are many nuances, and so all of them are messages within themselves. So we're preaching several messages to you this morning, and I pray that you, if you want to take a praise break in between the messages, you can. But it's all in this pericope, and so I'm doing some exposition. And it says in verse 38, it says, and he was. Now, Jesus, we understand in verse 37, so that they can connect to it. Verse 37, it says, there rose a great storm of wind and waves beaten into the ship so that it was full and it was taken on water. And then in verse 38, and it says, and he was, that's talking about Jesus, in the hinder parts, in the stern of the ship. I got a little boat, so that's the stern, asleep on a pillow now they're in the midst of a storm that Jesus has accounted for now they hadn't accounted for it but he had accounted for it and so he's asleep on a pillow now think of the imagery you know they want the writer wanted to put in here how comfortable he was it could have said he was just asleep, but no, when you're on a pillow, you know, you might sleep on the couch, but when you really want to get some good sleep, you'll go get in the bed and you get a pillow because that will allow you to land softly. It'll allow you to be able to rest comfortably. And so he was asleep on a pillow. Point number two, learn to get some rest in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of your storm. Learn to get some rest in the middle of a crisis, in the middle of your storm. He was sleep on a pillow. He was sleep because he was not alarmed. He was not surprised. He had and has spiritual foresight. You see, Jesus was operating full of the spirit. And so, you know, we know a little bit because sometimes we're in the spirit and sometimes we're not. When we're in the spirit, we can see and discern. But when we're not, then we have to only look at what's in front of us. But Jesus, he was on the ship, asleep on the pillow, already prepared for this because he had spiritual foresight he was able to use the storm as an object lesson on faith it was a teaching moment for him so Jesus was intentional about this thing because he wanted to teach them on faith he ultimately want them to operate in confidence but he has to deal with their lack of faith because he would see it on so many occasions. Jesus said, I got to teach these guys how to have faith because I'm not going to always be with them. And they're not going to be able to do the work to turn this world upside down as my kingdom agents in the earth if they don't understand faith. So he's teaching them a lesson. Now, how many know that Jesus was in a human state? Yep, he was at this state. He was fully God, yet fully man. He wasn't part God, part man. He was fully God, fully man. So he went through everything that we have to go through. He was tempted at all points, but sin not. He understood what we experienced because he was fully man. It wouldn't have been fair for him to be only God and savior. He had to be a kinsman redeemer. So he had to be like us to win us. And so we understand that Jesus, he was a a man, but he was also God. Now, we know that he is a spirit now, right? He is a spirit, right? The Bible says God is a spirit. So, as a man, he needed to sleep. Y'all don't mind me taking my time and slowing down. I might not get through the points, but I don't want to rush through them and, 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 and slight you. Because I believe there's some things that's going to help us right now in our present circumstances. Somebody say, God accounted for this. He wasn't surprised. He's not surprised by any of this. 
So, so this is the thing. This is the thing. Jesus, in this state, he was fully man, fully God. But now he's spirit. So as fully man, he needed to sleep. And so now we got to understand that God is a spirit. So God has no need for sleep. He doesn't sleep, nor does he slumber. Because Jesus Christ, as a man, he slept, but as God, as God, he didn't have to sleep. Because a spirit does not sleep or slumber. You say, well, preacher, what's your point? All right. My point is this. You got to learn to get some rest in the middle of your crisis because God is up. If he's going to be up anyway, why do I need to be up when God doesn't sleep or slumber? If he's going to be up, then I can get some sleep because I'm a man. And as a man, let me get some rest and I'm going to deal with, I'm going to rely on God who is a spirit who has no need of sleep and slumber, who's always on the job, who is always able, omnipotent and powerful enough to take care of what's even happening while I'm asleep. So I'm not going to worry when God is able to take care of all things. So I'm going to get some rest and I'm going to let the Lord fight my battle. Even in my sleep, God will give his angels charge over me. So if God is up, I'm going to let him be up. And the Bible declares that we ought to be anxious for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let our requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall rule our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. All you got to do is pray about it and then go to sleep. Pray about it and sit yourself down somewhere. Take your mind off it. If you're going to give it to Jesus, how are you going to figure out what only God can work out? It's, it's counterproductive to give something to God and then take it back. To give something to God and have a thought and snatch it back. You got to give it to God and the thought comes and then you leave it with God. You say, God, I don't understand it. God, I'm tempted to grab it, but I know that you are a load bearer and a heavy burden sharer. And that thing will break me down. But I know that your arms are not short. I know that you are strong and mighty. I know that you are a God of war. I know that you fight on my behalf. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom. We got to understand that God's got your back, so you need to get some rest and stop walking around, acting like you about to lose your mind in the midst of the crisis. Do you serve God or not? Are you going to serve God? Are you going to trust him or not? Sometimes the world are wiser in their way than we are in ours. We claim we know God. How you got people in the world that ain't worrying? You got believers that stress it out. We need to trust in our God. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and do extra. You should be extra cool. Somebody say extra cool. Not normal cool. You should be extra cool. Like, like, like smooth to the max. You ought to be dapper. You ought to be extra cool. Not because everything is going right, but because of the God I serve. The world ought to see God on you. The Bible said, let your light so shine before me that they see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. You ought to be extra cool. Peace in this pandemic. Christ over Christ and winning over worry. Refocusing so that this thing does not consume you. Can the church say amen? Well, y'all give me a few more minutes. We're not going to get to all five, but I'm going to give you at least one more. Can you take one more? Just at least one more. We, we go to the scripture, and it says here, verse 38b. It says he was asleep on a pillow. In verse 38b, it says, and they awake him. And they say unto him, master, which means rabbi, which means teacher. Like you... Our leader, don't you care about us? You don't care that we're getting ready to perish? You don't care that we're getting ready to perish? 
They had already established their faith. They had, we getting ready to die. They had already prophesied their death. We getting ready to die. You don't even care to watch us. You don't even care to be up doing this thing. You don't care. And he said, yeah, I care, but I got a greater lesson to teach you. You need to have faith in God. You need to have faith in God. You don't care that we perish. Then he says, and he arose. Somebody say he arose. And rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. How quick did it happen? Just like that. How quick did it happen? Just like that. How quick can your situation change? Just like that. How quick can he deliver you just like just like that? You can be in one frame of mind this day and then tomorrow it be totally different. You got to have hope in God to know that he can switch your situation around. Somebody say just like that. But my point is for number three, and there's points within the points. Point number three is do like Jesus did. Arise and rebuke the things that you can't see. See, because Jesus could not see the wind. He could only see the waves, the effect of the wind. He could only see the water, the, the effect of the wind. He rebuked the things that you couldn't see. And he spoke to the things that were visible. He rebuked the winds. You can't see the winds. You can only see the effect of the wind. The Bible said you can't see the wind. Y'all think you can see the wind. Look at the wind blowing. No, but you see what is blowing on. But you can't see the wind. You can't see the wind. You can see the trees blowing, but you can't see the wind. In cartoon, they try to show the wind. They try to show you the wind. They do a swiggly. That's what wind look like. You look at the weather channel. They do the wind like that. But you can't see the wind. All you can see are the effects of the winds. Oh, he rebuked the winds. We can't see it. But he spoke to the waves. It's the things that we can see. It's the practical things that we can identify. You see, what we can see is we can see our kids in this season coming from outside and not washing their hands. We can see that. So we tell them, practically speaking, to wash your hands. We, we can see people not wearing masks, so we say, put on your mask. We can see people not practicing social distance, so we say social distance. We speak to that. We can see people out running around, not everywhere, like they don't have a care in the world. And we can say stay home. Now, this is speaking to our present circumstances. So we say to those things, practically, we say the things. But then what we have to understand is that we can only say to the things that we can see. The things that we can't see, we need to do like Jesus did. We rebuke those things. See, Jesus, he rebuked the winds. What rebuke defined means is to turn back or to keep down. To turn back or to keep down. Oh, my goodness. Somebody say rebuke. Rebuke means to turn back or to keep down. So in the midst of this crisis, we are turning back COVID. And we are keeping by rebuking. I can't see it, but what I'm going to do because I can't see this microscopic thing, but I'm going to rebuke what I can't see. I'm going to turn back what I can't see and I'm going to keep it down. I'm going to rebuke COVID-19. I'm going to rebuke Corona from my house, from my children, from everything that's around me. I'm going to rebuke the pandemic. I'm going to rebuke sickness. I'm going to rebuke disease I'm going to rebuke this crisis because I can't see it and then I am going to speak to the things that I can yes, yes. in verse 39b and we're going to close it out right here 
because I'm out of time and I don't think you can take any more because I can't take giving you any more. Verse 39b. And Jesus, he says, peace, be still. You got to declare in your life, peace, be still. Tell yourself, peace, be still and know that I'm God. Be still. See, in this season, you got to speak. You got to rebuke. And you got to declare. Speak. This is all you need to be doing as it relates to this. Speak. Rebuke. And declare. Speaking to the things that you can see. Rebuking the things you can't see. And declaring the word of the Lord. Peace. Be still. And as you do that, I'm going to tell you, I'm telling you by the, 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 the mouth of God. I'm telling you as a mouthpiece of God that this situation is going to shift in an instance how you feel about it. And there are going to be some unsuspected things that will happen to you as you just listen to the word of God. You know, we are passing over unto the other side. We're going to give you the other points on Wednesday, but let us go unto the other side. Let us pass on to the other side. Number one, by remembering what God said. Remembering what side. Number two, learning to get some rest in the middle of a storm, in the middle of your crisis. And then number three, do like Jesus did. Arise and rebuke the things that you can't see. Speak to the things that you can in Jesus' name.